Hey there, welcome back, and we are in episode 3 now, and we're actually going to start going into Mapbox itself and get a look at Mapbox. Uh, this will probably be the first time that we really go into it, um, but it certainly won't be the last. So uh, we're going to learn a little bit about just uploading data, getting familiar with the interface, what's going on, and um, working on a couple types of data that we touched on in the last couple sections and actually uh, starting to, to get to use them. So let's see, what are we looking at? Uh, we're going to look a little bit at their pricing just because that's really important for you to know and you can go through the user sign up um, and we'll just briefly look at settings but it's it's mostly uh, your standard kind of stuff but there's a few things in there you may want to know if you're a total beginner uh, to Mapbox. Uh, so we're going to talk about what data sets are, what tile sets are, and then we're going to try out different data sources. So data sets and tile sets are quite confusing when you first encounter them. Um, it seems just like jargon, and it is, but there is a difference, um, and we will go over that. So why don't we just head out and get into Mapbox. So let's see, I've logged in here to Mapbox, so why don't I just log out? We'll just see, uh, you know, just standard, standard sign-in thing, but let's go to pricing here first. So they do have something that's uh, pay-as-you-go. It's something like Google system, or it's a pretty common API system that up to a certain point, um, they're free. After that, they have a small charge per thousand. So as you can imagine, if you've hit 50,000, this still isn't too bad of a price. And then there's a large commercial license for, for larger um, users. So that's just important to know that, uh, and they will send you a notification. I've gotten a few once you hit this amount, um, and then you can just monitor your billing. And I found Mapbox is, you know, they're pretty responsive to support requests, so that's that's good to know. Um, so rather than going over to trying to understand there's so much different types of documentation going on and studio and stuff, let's just let's just go actually um, sign in there. So I'm signing in. Okay, so you've made your account, or we've logged in, so let's just first go to um, our account settings. Just uh, some basic stuff, so um, security. This is what I wanted to show you. Um, they're going to have some place where you can manage some access tokens, um, like this one I have here. And you can create new ones, different ones, ones in secret, ones in background. Um, have different um, scopes on them, so that's different permission levels for what the user or the person accessing can do with that. So if you do have to have it public, um, you can make sure that they only have certain abilities. Um, here we are in data sets. I have a bunch of data sets because I'm working on a bunch of stuff myself. Um, but let's play around. So okay, a data set. Let's, let's talk about what these actually are before we throw some information in it. So you can see they kind of have them in this order here. And um, if we go from, from bottom up, it's data sets, tile sets, styles. And that's kind of how the flow is going to go. Uh, generally, we're going to get some very basic data. We're going to put it in as a data set. Then it's going to turn into a tile set. And that's going to be added to a style. And that's kind of how it's going to run. So data sets are usually the more simplistic data types that we're getting. So for instance, a GeoJSON feature. There's also a couple other types. Um, it can also be a CSV file. So this is just a file with your coordinates associated. You can have properties involved, um, but it's more often like a kind of text file rather than a shape file or something that has uh, vector information. So that's, that's the technical difference is this isn't vector data. This is just geographic data. Um, and then it can be edited afterwards within Mapbox because the GeoJSON is an easy format for the web, as I was talking about before. So within data sets, within Mapbox, they have a whole interface that we're going to look at for modifying this or even creating a new one from nothing. But a data set is kind of like the lowest level of data that you're going to encounter. And that's going to mainly be, in the end, GeoJSONs. That's what you're going to be uploading here. And then the, the strength of a data set is that you can get in and edit it quite easily. <coughs> So tile sets, you actually, you actually don't have to start with a data set, technically. If you have a shape file, you can just load it directly into the tile set rather than having to deal with the data set at all. So for instance, on um, <clears throat> one of the previous pages we were looking at with MapSend, let's just go back to that. Um, here it is in Amsterdam, Netherlands. 
they had a shapefile available beside a GeoJSON. So the GeoJSON, in terms of Mapbox's ability, is that you're going to be able to still edit those features yourself in Mapbox. If you take the shape file and just upload it right here, you're not going to be able to edit those features that are inside it. It's just a, a big pile of features. The advantage is that you can get a lot more data in without having to deal with the size um, sometimes. <clears throat> or it's just that it's very commonly packaged this way and that also you don't have to actually do the rendering, although since it's being done in Mapbox, that's, that's not a big ideal. Um, and I'll kind of explain what I mean by rendering. So here we have a couple tile sets, and there's a lot more of them, as you can see, because there's different shape files that I found around the web, and I just uploaded directly in here. And some of them have kind of opaque names like this. Some of them have clearer names, like um, I was looking at some transit lines. Um, here's a bathymetry that I was looking at, actually, on my own, and just some other uh, bits of information. And then there's the default Mapbox tile sets as well. So when you log in here, you'll probably just see these defaults and maybe a sample one that they've made for you. But in these um, default tile sets, there's all kinds of information too. There's all kinds of uh, information about streets and terrain. Um, let's just look briefly at this big one. So this is crazy. There's so much information. This is like a compilation of data about, um, you know, with places and cities and streets and just everything. This is the whole Mapbox Streets base layer that they style to make their, their basic map. And you can see that there's a huge array of different types of information in here. There's building information, which has the height of buildings, um, whether they're underground. We have um, marine labels, so names of water bodies. We've got all kinds of different places, labels um, in different languages, Chinese names, Spanish names, Arabic names. We've got waterways. So there's like pretty much everything. Well, there is everything you need to make a giant map with that. Your, your um, tile sets are not usually going to be that expansive because you're not usually building a base map completely from scratch. But if you are, then, then they will look something like that, and they'll have all these layers inside them. So what actually happens between these two? <clears throat> well, essentially, when you make a map, and you have a map online, um, those maps, especially these kind of maps where you are pulling them around, so in the style of Mapbox where, or Google Maps, where we, uh, why don't we just go to Google Maps. where we pull the map around like this. You can actually see that there's a little bit of t lag time where there's this gray space before it loads in. And that's because we're actually loading in images. And those images are pre-rendered um, based on different kinds of information um, that is in the data sets. Okay? So in a sense, we have data sets on the bottom. And then they turn into these images that we're going to be able to provide to the person looking at the map and just render them just outside of what they can see so that we avoid having that gray space as much as possible. But that's a whole bunch of images. So those images all have to be created and put somewhere so that you can actually go use them. And that's what a tile set essentially is. And that's why it's so much bigger in a sense and why you can't just get in and edit it because it's actually images. It's not the underlying data that's underneath it. And there's more technical ways. It's really vector data, so it's it's not as static as a typical image, but I don't want to get too technical. It has all this geographic information still in it. <laughs>